It's an honor to present a person who I've known since I was almost nine years old, who we have seen leap, take leaps and create a space for dance curation, organizing, and is a true friend to a community of dancers and folk artists, whether they're folk dancers, classical, operatic, ritualistic, everybody turns to Helen Acharya. And we always knew her as Helen Anthony, so she's Helen Anthony Acharya, who has served as the uh, secretary of um, the Sangeet Natak Academy Government of India, and is now in charge of is the program head for dance. Helen started her dance training with, in Delhi in Bharatanatyam with the Srimati Sundari Sheshadri, Sri Dakshinamurti, and Srimati Leela Sampson at the Bharti Kala Kendra. And then when she graduated, she um, realized that she wanted to do a course in choreography, and she was a graduate of Natya Institute of Kathak and Choreography. And that's when she interfaced with Maya Didi and went on to become one of her closest confidants. She also studied Chao from Lingraj Acharya and Shashidhar Acharya, who later also became a husband. She was also a choreographer for a short period at the Natya Ballet Center, and also worked with Narendra Sharma at Bhumika. She took to arts administration in a post that was first created by Kamala Devi Chattopadhyay for Maya Didi as program officer to SNA, the dance department. She was also pursuing her PhD with the Jamia Millia University in the dramatic techniques of the Elizabethan theater in comparison to the Sanskrit theater. She has curated over 150 national and international level festivals. I think that deserves a round of applause <laughs> in India and abroad. She's worked with organizations like UNESCO and many others. And also, uh, along with UNESCO, she has made films on yoga, on chow, and Manipuri Sankirtan. I am delighted to welcome on stage Helen, who will be speaking about Maya Didi creating a multi-layered perpetuity. Helen Anthony Acharya. Namaste. And uh, Thank you for being here, and I should thank Daya for making it possible for all of us to be here to share this beautiful venture, the creation of the trust. I'm totally delighted to share with you some of my reflections on the pedagogy and the teaching methodology followed by Maya Didi which was comprehended so deeply and the brevity with which she gave her one-liners, it gave us a direction for life, to lead a meaningful life. I think I take pride in being one of the stakeholders of the legacy as I have not pursued the performing arts directly, as all of you do, but I'm a stakeholder in the space of my mind, my approach to what I do, being in the academy for the last 25 years, and even earlier to that. Maya Didi's systematic, organized classes to me, was an epitome of the Shastras and the Prayogas. Because the early morning classes where she taught Natya Shastra to us and other texts, the next moment we would find it being happened either in the practical classes that she was giving us, or she would say, now go to the library and explore and study. And it was mandatory for us 
to go, the, to go to the Sangeet Natak Academy Library, to visit the archives, and to me, at that point of time as a learner, and the way it impacted my mind, I could understand with Didi's explanation what it is there in the art of Kuriyattam and what created the magic in Uday Shankar's experimental works. When she spoke about Kuriyattam, I shared with Didi and she said, when you people pass out from the institute and you want to take some research work, these are these areas where you could indulge in serious research work. And that's how I landed up doing my PhD from the Jamia Millia on the dramatic techniques of the Elizabethan theater as compared to the Sanskrit theater. Now, in the winter months, uh, the classrooms transformed for us because we could take a magical dive into the diverse, vibrant folk dancers who arrived in Delhi, thousands of them who lived in the tents for over two months in Delhi, who, and then later they were presented uh, in the folk dance festival, one of the leading festivals of folk dancers organized post-independent India in Delhi, which was called the Lok Utsav. Of course, Sangeet Natak Academy was at that time responsible for creating these festivals, but Lok Utsav was a laboratory for us. We would go and spend hours together, days together in the tents of those folk dancers. And I remember Rina Didi used to be a regular visitor from Canada, who used to be with us. And we used to study those folk dancers, their music, their costume, their jewelry, took photographs, danced with them. So two months, it was a picnic along with a learning process. The regular Katha classes were, not, were stopped at that time for us the choreography students, and the regular Kathak dancers used to continue. And the test would be when we come back to the class and we were asked to compose our one scenes, our abhisarikas, historical, Sanskrit, so on and so forth. And we used to make notes and create. So with the Shastras, our Prayogas were put to test. That was something very special to me because I was able to understand those beautiful folk dancers way back in the 80s. And Didi used to say, Pehle chale jao. Pehle ja kar un logon ke saath aap kaam karo. Because the song and drama division was responsible for choreographing these folk dancers while they march on the India Gate uh, Rajpath, uh, you know, the three minutes or four minutes presentation, which was again designed for the audiences who had come to visit, uh, to view the uh, Republic Day Parade. So Didi used to insist that you go first and see them, otherwise they change their formations. Ko badal dete hai. So when they had just arrived, you know, the Langa Mangniyars, the, um, uh, the other dancers from Rajasthan, Gulabo. Gulabo, nobody knew Gulabo at that time, and all the institute uh, students were learning and dancing Leto Jai Jai Re Dildo Deto Jai Jai, you know the, the Rajasthani song with the Kalbelias and with the Mangneyas, we used to sit and perform and make notes and things like that. So that was a very, very special experience for we Delhiites because all that happened in Delhi. Then uh, apart from this kind of a study, we were not spared for the rest of the day and Didi would take us to the Nati Valley Center there we would, you know, dance in her choreographies, the Tulsi Ke Ram, Krishna Leela, and she would give us lessons on the lighting, the magical lighting of Tapasda. You know, we could learn from seeing what Krishna Leela was all about. It was a magical choreography of light and sound based on Manipuri dance. So as learners, it really strongly impacted our mind. And then she would say, Dilli mein jo kuch program ho hai, theater, dance, music, Sab dekhne ki koshish karo. To hum sab chale jate te dekhne. And then we used to spend the night at Patodi house, in Didi's house, 
eating the lovely vegetable pulao and just sleeping next to her with little daya on the side. And then <laughs> Didi would take us for our corrections. You know, she would point out, Aaj tumne yaha ye nahi kiya. Isko aise karna tha. Isko waise karna tha. At that time, we didn't even know being a urban city, you know, uh, people. We didn't know what a uh, Guru Shishya Parampara was. We didn't even know that we were already into a Guru Shishya Parampara. By the time we passed out, we understood that, you know, this was a wonderful way of teaching and learning. And we were blessed to be with Didi, where she would be a mother to us. I was literally spend the night with her in her house, and the next morning, dress up and come to institute, and then go back home the next day. So to me, it actually gave me a wide, wide spectrum and to explore the performing arts of the country. When I was applying for the Sangeet Natak Academy job, Didi told me this, that Helen, this post was actually, it was a field officer's post created for her uh, by Kamla Devi ji because she was our vice chairman of Sangeet Natak Academy at that time. And she gave a choice to Didi. She said, you can take up this job, comfortable job and be here, or you can take the scholarship and go to Russia and study choreography. And Didi told me that she opted for the latter. And uh, when I told her that I'm getting this job, she says, very good. And every day when I interact with artists, when I try to curate programs, it is her inspiration that I seek guidance from. And it's been 25 years with Sangeet Natak Academy for me. And I think I've had a very, very fruitful journey. Apart from the artistic, you know, the mind opening and all that, the values that Didi inculcated in us, we learned to respect the artist. This whole issue about the classical, the folk, the tradition, I'm confronting this issue today because we get parliament questions as to why Andhra Natyam is not classical, why such and such dance is a folk dance, what is happening to Kuchipudi, what is Vilasani Natyam. I have all my answers. It's an, it's an other point that I'm not able to convey it rightly to the government, but we manage. You know, we tell them that these nomenclatures are there only to look at it from an outward uh, perspective. Otherwise, it's just music, dance, theater, and puppetry and other all our traditional performing arts fall under that larger umbrella. So then again, I go back to Didi because she inculcated in us the ability to analyze. Today, we were talking about what to take and what not to take. As performers, as dancers, when we are open to a healthy critique of one's own self through our close friends, through uh, you know, our colleagues, we can introspect and correct ourselves. But as organizers, it's very difficult for us to say ki bhai, ye theek nahi hai, aapko aisa karna chahiye, aas, aapko waisa karna chahiye. Being in the academy, it is a big challenge to create that balance. Because academy of late, I should say, has kind of gone, had deviated from being the body of excellence alone. It has become more of an opportunity giving body. And I keep on, you know, having this fight with my colleagues, ki bhaiya, yahan par hum opportunity dene ke liye nahi aaye, we have to set standards. So, and th these are, because I could take lessons from Didi to introspect, to analyze, always. She told me, tum kuch karo, tum likho, tum kisi art institution mein kaam karo, tumhare liye achha rahega. And, you know, it, it put so much meaning into my life, because I knew exactly what to do. She's the one who told us that we went to a village in the late 
1950s, she took Dr. Kothari and others to these villages, and she said, Vaha Raja log ye dance karte hain. The moment I went to that village as a researcher, I met Shashadhar, and I could just connect with him with this art, though it is a community art. They don't dance to entertain others, they dance for themselves. So all these community arts, how we need to appreciate it, and what are the spaces that they should be now be sustained, that is a big question that we confront every day. Because all these, all our arts are becoming entertainment alone. So for me, the lessons at the Institute have molded me to be a good, you know, server to the field of performing arts. And I hope, of course, I have made mistakes, but I, th that conscious keeps, you know, telling me ki bhai, ab next time ye nahi hona chahiye. And we move on. So, since I'm talking uh, extempo, and now I think I'm uh, running short of time, I would like to conclude here because I can just go on and on. But I'm sure uh, with these little reflections, I've been able to tell you that whatever I have learned in life, it is only because of being with Maya Didi. And I'm thankful to Natya, Daya, and all our friends who have come together to take this beautiful venture forward. And I look forward to being part of such seminars in the coming years also. Thank you, all of you.